yesterday's calves video that was not just the lift of the day was calves you know whenever i have a rest day because uh yeah holy crap so arm day was actually supposed to be yesterday but i got back from school pretty late and honestly i you know i just felt sick so had to make an objective and what i what i think to be the correct decision and say you know what i better just get some sleep and sleep I did. Oh my god. I went to bed at about midnight and I didn't wake up until 2. And I woke up thirsty and hungry, which that is a good sign because my appetite has kind of been wrecked the past couple days just from some kind of not like legit the sickness, like not hospital level of course, but just kind of some kind of something messing with me. And whenever that happens, usually like my energy to train doesn't crash too much, but my appetite will kind of just sink to nothing. And it gets hard for me to get my food down. So, main idea, sickness is not conducive with gains. Not even a freaking little bit. But, feel good now. And, oh yeah, so what I was trying to say was, so anytime that there's a rest day, right, the day following, since there's no lift, I'll just record the cardio. And now I'm going to start doing my calves after cardio, if that, uh, if that makes sense. But that was earlier today, so it's now 6.55. The gym closes at 8, and that is pretty much just about as much time as I need for arms, tries and buys. So I, I'm a little bit conflicted in a way, because I like doing triceps supersetted with buys, like a set of pushdowns, and then jump straight into a set of curls, and then rest. You know, a set of machine dips, and then a set of preacher curls, and then rest. You know, that sort of style. Like, I do like it, but I don't know. I think it's just a little bit... I almost want to say it's too much. It's like, to an extent, I almost feel like I'm getting too pumped. Like... Because at the end of the lift, obviously my tries and my buys are both as pumped as they're going to get. But, I don't know, I think it's, I think it's not a good distribution of attention, you know? Like, I almost feel like when I do a supersetted lift like that, now I used to do them all the time, you know? I used to do a set of leg extensions straight into a set of hamstring curls. I used to do a set of pull-downs straight into a set of chest like, for a while, I was doing that style of, you know, superset. But I think it's just... It's like trying to multitask. So rather than do... So, sure, you can finish two things at once. But I don't really think you're doing either one of them as well as you could if you were to just do one in its completion and then move on to the next one. So unless I'm really in a rush in which maybe I'd be a bit more inclined to be like, okay, I gotta get these sets done. Uh, push down straight into curls, and like, you know, because it, it does have a time-saving measure for sure. But you know, if time is no issue, then I wanna finish tries all the way, cook them completely, and then, you know, once they're bleeding on the ground, I can say, all right, who's next? And ideally, my biceps are gonna be kinda quivering, like, oh, oh. You know, you get what I'm saying? Because they've seen what's happened to tries, and they're on the chopping block. So, that's kind of my stance there. Like, I don't know. Just, I mean, just think about it. Just how... Do you really think you'll be able to do a set as intensely on curls if you just did a set of really hard pushdowns or really hard machine dips? I mean, obviously you're not working the muscle that you're about to. You know, my biceps don't come into play at all during tricep pushdowns. Still, you know, it's yeah, just a personal preference thing. And I say this now, but I also said with just as much confidence back when I did do these so, like sort of superset style workouts that like, oh, you know, it's saving time, I'm, I'm more efficient. Is So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. Get in the gym, do your sets, leave with a pump. <laughs> That's all you got to do. So, I'm thinking, what am I thinking? 
Yeah, I know what I'm thinking. I know exactly what I'm thinking. I'm not going to spoil it for you, so let's just get in there and uh, get started. See what's first up in terms of uh, tricep movements. All right, so since I'm in a rush, I'm a little bit more prone to go lighter on the first couple of sets. Because if I were to like try to jump up to, you know, like the whole stack and a couple plates for straight bar pushdowns, it would take me a while to actually get warmed up to that. Because my elbows do not like it if I try to do really heavy pushdowns without getting warmed up. You know, I think that's pretty, I don't think that's a isolated situation for me. I think that's fucking everybody. So instead of starting real heavy, lighter single arm kind of cross body extensions but really just try to squeeze like i want it to feel like my triceps are on fire at the bottom of each rep Okay. All right. I think another few more of those would be good. Honestly, I'd probably love some assistance on this kind of set, but I think that'd be kind of tricky for somebody to spot. So I'll just do one more solo. Do um, I think let's do something straight bar. Probably right here would be good. With just a, a little bit of extra ingenuity, I can combine these two weight stacks into one and have a solid amount of mass at my disposal to move around. So after those three sets, even though they were light, this feels pretty fucking heavy. Even after just one feeler rep, I can tell this will be a nice heavy set for. <coughs> I mean. I don't, it might even be less than 10 legit reps until I get some partials going. But as long as it's a hard set, I've got no problem with that. Oh! 
And with that, I'd say triceps have been fucking, fucking obliterated. Ooh. Just by feeling as well as, well, just by feeling. So, 30 minutes left. Let's go start some curls, goddammit. I'm gonna take the exact same approach to bias as I did with triceps. Instead of starting off with something gnarly heavy, I'm gonna try starting off with lighter curls and really hold it for a moment at the top. Honestly, I can't even really remember <coughs> the last time I curled below the 40s for an actual working set. So let's see how uh, let's see how much I can play around with the 30s. So based on how hard I'm trying to squeeze it at the top, my goal with this set is almost to do as few reps as possible, AKA make the reps very difficult. Because I could just sit here and swing the 30s around for, I don't even know how long, fucking forever. But being a little bit more controlled and methodical with it, you know, I want to get to like 20 and actually kind of not even be able to move. So that's sort of my mentality with this one. Oh, okay. That's kind of a burn I haven't really felt before on bias. But I think that was a little bit too light. Same thing, but with 40s. <clears throat> Okay. Oh, yeah. I think I know why I like using straps on curls. I was feeling a little bit of forearm activation on those ones. Ooh. That's, uh... I don't know what. I gotta think about it for a second. Haven't done these for a while. Let's, uh, let's go kind of old school. Not exactly Arnold style, but, you know, close enough. Some uh, bent over preachers. Now, I don't really, or no, no, what am I talking about? Not preachers, concentration curls. Yeah, I, um, eh. You could do it standing. I mean, there's nothing wrong with it, but 
honestly, the, uh, the position of doing the concentration curl, like standing here like this, it's only like three inches away from, fuck it, I hear my mouth. Yeah. It's only three inches away from being seated. And, you know, like I've kind of said before, my whole sort of approach to all these sets is I want the muscle that I'm targeting to be getting a ton of work, all of the work, and everything else to be out of the equation. So what makes more sense for me? You know, sit here and try to balance and like hold myself up like this and do them, or be a bit more stable, sit down, and just have to focus on curling. You know, I think that answers itself. So 40 pounds, weight that I could really control. This is gonna be kind of a squeeze and control bicep lift compared to my typical crazy bananas weight lifts. Partially just because I'm in a rush and I didn't really have time to get warmed up to something nuts. But whether it's really heavy or really light, as long as you go hard, I say that's a good set. So I'm gonna sit here and try to make it feel like my bicep is gonna pop at the top. Maybe do two, maybe just do one to be determined. One more. Now what? We'll figure it out. Some kind of curl, obviously. This curl machine will probably feel pretty good. Well, actually, no, not probably. I can guarantee it. So, I mean, those two, those four sets already done were pretty hard. I think if this is a good one, and I feel like I've pretty much done as much as I need to, this might be the end of it. That might have been a little too heavy, but I think that's it. Let's go check the pump and roll. There's kind of some dudes over in front of the mirror that I really like, but what are you going to do? Right here is just as good a posing spot of any. Now this was a good fucking arm day. I feel much better than I did. Like honestly, just the subjective feeling of this lift compared to the last back day, night and day, dude. I got so much sleep. I need to get that much sleep all the time. I feel like a fucking baller right now. But. Let's see if the pump matches, which I'm relatively certain that it freaking does. Whew. 
So again, hair is not going anywhere. Do not even start thinking that you're going to see one of these videos and it's like me with a haircut. It is going to keep on growing. Oof. Oh my goodness. Okay. What else is there? A last spread? Yeah, there we go. Oh yeah, dude. Lat spread with arm pump is a deadly fucking combination. That is the way to do it. Ooh, dude, triceps going crazy. Dude, I think I have like a fucking, I got like a cyst, man. You know, like where it's a big ass pimple inside your, shit. I might have to. They're closing in four minutes. There we go. No, nah, dude, fuck. Looks like the first collab might be with Dr. Pimple Popper. You know, that, uh, that Asian woman. If you know, you know, but whatever. So. Oof. I do not have a measuring tape, but I mean, I don't think I need a measuring tape to say that we're fucking pumped. Okay, now I'm just having fun. Yeah, I love it. Okay, one more crucifix and then we're out of here. Ooh, absolutely nasty. I might need two showers after this one. Let's get in the car. Now that was nice. That was a good arm day, if I have ever had one. And as you're well aware, I have had many, 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 many. And I will have many more. And truly, a truly endless amount more. But plan now is to go home and eat. I'm fucking. I'm not only hungry, I'm also thirsty. I didn't really fill up my jug before I came in today. I was just kind of sipping on the scraps of when I was drinking it earlier for cardio. So I gotta get back on that, fill it up with some. Oh crap. I no no, I got a ton. Got a ton of the hostile cluster dextrin mixed berry. Good powdered carb. So, but you know, pretty much just sugar in a bottle in a way. But not actually. You know, that one's kind of like a complex carb. Won't really spike your blood sugar as much. Not that I'm that concerned with that kind of stuff. Or, well, anyway, whatever. You know what I'm saying. So, gonna go hydrate rinse off I fucking I'm not a reekin but you should have the ability to tell if you start to have a little bit of a smell I gotta put some, put some soap on my body Dr. Squatch style but fuck man that's all I gotta say fucking talking about going home and showering and eating my food fucking nothing else is going on but it's in terms of bulking that is kind of the life Really, I just want to go home, put a big bowl of food in front of me, and just kind of you know, watch some kind of show and chill, kind of mindlessly get it all down. Speaking of shows, I need something else to watch. I finished The Sopranos, so fuck, man. Jujutsu Kaisen, they're only doing one episode a week. This last one was pretty cool, and hey, I'm already almost caught up on One Piece, so what else is there? Ah, uh, you know, Game of Thrones is out there. I know it's good. I'm not going to start it yet, though. I'll save it for later. But, well, I was about to say that won't affect the pump. But honestly, you know, the media that you watch, I think it kind of can affect the pump in a non-negligible way. Right? I've had some pretty hardcore lifts thinking about how... 
well, not really, not like thinking about it the whole time, but like listening to like an edit of Reiner and Bertolt fucking, you know, betraying Aaron and the scouts or you know, whatever else. You know, I, uh, oh, I was thinking of this badass quote. Oh, I can't remember what I, it was like. I can't remember. But, you know, the shit that you watch, I feel like it kind of reflects in your own life. So, if you take a dude and he just watched maybe two hours of The Good Doctor and one hour of Young Sheldon, I, I just don't really think that he's going to be that amped up to get a good lift. You know? Whereas, if you took somebody who just watched, like, you know, maybe three or four episodes of Baki, and then maybe uh, you know an episode of Breaking Bad or some cool shit, I think he's more likely to go hard, right? So that's uh, whether or not that's actually true. That's just kind of my mentality with it. So you know what else is there to discuss, man? Nothing. Home, food, sleep. Cardio in the morning, and then legs tomorrow. Uh, I need to get in the habit of lifting earlier uh, because my sleep schedule has been known to fluctuate very strongly. No, 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 no. I need, I need to wake up at. Here's my plan for the next while, and actually probably in continuation once school starts up again, just because you know I do have 8:30 classes next semester. I gotta be waking up at seven, just on the dot, no alarm, and going to bed at oof, no later than eleven. That is the way to do it. That is the way to do it. It's just nicer, you know. You kind of you kind of get a little bit more control over your day if you have a solid sleep schedule. You know, it's um, it's no fun if you just kind of. I mean, it's just, it's no fun to have to wake up after like five hours of sleep and be like, oh, oh all right, I got to go do blank. Uh, you know, is it worth it? Is that three hours of extra time on your phone worth the, you know, kind of shittiness of the next day of not getting enough sleep? You know, depending on how dopamine dependent you are, the answer to that is not actually that obvious. You know, I've, I've got a hard time putting my phone down, but... I gotta. I kind of need to reiterate to myself that, in a bulking context, in a muscle growth context, even just a life context, you need a. You need your eight hours. You need your freaking eight hours, and that's for sure. So, that's fine. Yeah, I got no insight to say. I got no insightful tips and motivation apart from the fact that, I hope you're hitting your cardio on the daily, hitting your lifts on the daily. Eating a good amount of food, fats, carbs, proteins, making sure you drink enough electrolytes. And then when you do go into lift, you know, make sure you're amped up. Whether you listen to music or not, before each set, take a couple of breaths, little huffs and puffs. And, you know, jump onto it, throw that shit around. Take a few minutes and... Oh, goodness. Felt like I was going straight and running the red light. No, you know what I'm saying, man. You go hard. The only thing that you have to gain... No, no, wait, wait, wait. Let me, uh, let me rephrase that. Uh, the only... Oh, yeah. You have nothing to lose by going hard. You only have everything to gain. That's what I meant to say. Yeah, there we go. Right? I mean, you could go into the gym, and honestly, you could do the exact same thing as the guy next to you. Right? But if you don't really push it, you're just not going to have the same results. And that'll kind of be like really pushing it. It's kind of a twofold process. Because for one thing, when you're actually in the gym, you know, you're going to have a better workout. You're going to stimulate your muscles more intensely. Right? What part of that sounds bad? None of it. But also, kind of the more serious you can take this kind of shit, it'll just make it easier for you to go harder progressively over time. You know, you kind of, uh, there's sort of a bar that you can maybe not measure, but like quote unquote hypothetically quantify, you know, and that's your basic proficiency in a skill, your comfortability in a situation, etc. You know, so as a beginner, your skill level, 
the amount of effort that you can put into your sets, you know, how hard you can really go, how disciplined you are, you know, it's pretty low. And it's not for a lack of trying. It's purely due to a lack of experience, you know? You just started this shit. So for you to even start doing it, right, you're raising the bar, you know? You're going, you're pushing past what you're used to. And after you've done that for about a month as a beginner, that new bar of you going in every day, doing your lifts, maybe even tracking your protein, getting some protein shakes in, or having your mom cook up some ground beef every so often, you know, that's your new bar. That's the new normal. So if you want to make changes, you got to constantly push that new normal higher and higher and higher over time. You know, as you get more experienced, right? don't be taking rest days if you don't need them. And really, you got to make sure you're pushing it on a constant basis. Good sets all the time. Ideally, you'll kind of just get to a point where even the idea of doing a scrappy set, like, oh, man. I mean, I see, you see it all the time. You know, obviously not everybody. Of course, I see people at the gym going hard, really actually pushing themselves to, I, I don't want to say close to, well, yeah, maybe not failure per se, because a lot of movements in the gym, you can do some partials. So failure gets a little bit ambiguous, but they're doing sets that reach a zone of intensity where it's like, that's a good set. That guy's going hard for real. I got to do it like that. You know, I do see that, but that's not the majority. You know, a lot of people just kind of go in and you know, they do a couple reps, it starts to feel hard and re-rack it. That's the end of it, you know? So that's kind of a situation where I feel like that's their bar, you know, that's their bar of normal. And since they don't really push above it, then, you know, they're not really going to make any legit progress. So that's kind of a situation where you have to actually you know, look at your own habits, look at your own you know, history or uh, your own, your own, uh, shit, what's the word I'm trying to think of? Look at your lifts historically over the past few weeks or even a few months hopefully not a few years and if they're all the same over that long of a period then you gotta change something up you know and I don't think the answer is always in oh I need to do a new split okay I need to really fundamentally switch my training program up completely it's the program that's wrong it's not me that's you know it's just just look around dudes get huge or not even huge but people make progress doing a lot of different things because you know, the human body is very versatile it can react and be stimulated in a very large number of ways but kind of a common denominator across any style of training which I feel like is the main determinant of whether or not you're actually gonna make gains or not is your intensity you know I could go in and for the next fucking six months only do really light sets like I did today like light squeezing, really be in total control of the weight. And as long as I went hard on all of them, I think I'd make progress. Or I could go in and for the next six months, only really try to push the weight as much as I can on every set. Maybe not focus so much on the squeezing aspect, but I just have a lot of tension on them. And you know, I'd probably still make progress, you know. Now, I'm not saying either one of those is the best situation. Really, what I do say is a combination of the two is going to be good for you. But you kind of get what I'm saying, you know? I mean, if CrossFitters can look like freaks, Olympic lifters can look like freaks, right? do you think the answer is in their training style? Or do you think it's in their training intensity and the amount of, you know, energy and just the amount that they can bring in every day is what's going to determine you know, what separates them from the crowd? I think that's... Uh, I think that should be a little bit of a call to action to maybe not put so much emphasis on trying to like optimize the perfect routine, but you know, rather just make sure that whatever you're doing, which hopefully you do like, you need to do a routine that you're comfortable with and relatively enjoy if you want to do it on a consistent basis. But assuming that's already in place, just make sure you go fucking hard, man. Right? And if you kind of have a, if you, uh, if that's not super easy for you to do, then maybe ask for some help. Right? If you got some gym bros in there next to you, maybe if you're kind of prone to putting the weight down a little bit early, you know, ask him for a spot. Tell him like, okay, make sure you help me get five reps after failure. 
you know? Because if you know, maybe I'm not that good at getting a hard set alone, ask somebody for help. But ideally, if you know that you're kind of not awesome at pushing it, you should really just try to get better at it. But you get what I'm trying to say. I um, I don't know if I can necessarily relate to that, because I feel like I've always been relatively good at pushing it. But don't worry, man. Even, well, not even me, but me too. Right? I've got that bar of proficiency. That bar of like, okay, this is a normal lift for me. It's right here. And every time I go in, I want to exceed that. I want to make sure that that lift is better than any that I've done before. And that doesn't have to be in terms of like using a crazy amount of weight, which I've never used, or, you know, hitting a PR, doing, you know, 10 sets instead of five. It's kind of just the subjective intensity. You know, that's how I kind of grade my lifts. Even if like for whatever reason, I couldn't get a pump. Like, let's say this, this arm pump was half as good as it was today, you know, if I still knew just based on feeling and, you know, my own personal grading scale of my exertion, if I knew that I really pushed it on every set, that there's nothing else I could do, you know, I did my shit, now I gotta go home and eat and just do it again. So, hopefully you took a, uh, you took a little something from that, but whatever what freaking ever so home food shower food sleep perfect ender of a good day for a lifter so i'll see you next time